Welcome in, you're tuned to The Leg Up, your domestic thoroughbred weekly preview podcast. I'll get it out in one, and uh, on the back of a Melbourne Cup we've just uh, seen on Tuesday, we're heading into 2000 Guineas weekend. Um, Steve, so it'll be a big weekend. How was your Melbourne Cup day, lads? Man barely standing. How was Melbourne Cup day? Mate, plenty? Uh, absolute rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, very happy for uh, those who did get some. I, I believe someone oh, very close that, to us, like, it, one oh. of the three got some. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. Well, you know, you're not, I'm not one to sky, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, Twilight Payment, a bit of the Quinella. Um, I did say to someone I hadn't clicked on the Melbourne Cup since Empire Rose won, and that's probably not too far off the mark, to be fair. So, um, yeah, I was due. I was due. You didn't get 30 times the first four? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wasn't you? How was that? 30 <laughs> times the first four. 1.2 million or thick end of for a 70-year-old retiree from Bishopdale. How's that? Very canny. Yeah, <laughs> very canny. Two Quinellas, Steve. Did you see that? Yeah, did I did see, see that. that. Um, two up front and two for third and fourth, and... And got the bickies 30 times the, the first four, which was a tad under 40k, so 1.2 mil. Yeah, he probably he probably uh, stole a bit of, fair bit of cash off the top of that dividend, to be fair. He, he did. had got the he first did. four. If you'd struck the first four, you might have got, you know, 50 grand, but he's he's taken it all to Christchurch, man, barely standing, isn't he? Oh, good on him. Yeah. <laughs> fair play. <laughs> when you do that. Yeah, we're not going to, you wouldn't be complaining. Uh, fair play to him. Uh, let's bring in our man on the uh, ground up north there, Brennan Popwell. G'day, BPG. You worked tirelessly on Melbourne Cup Day and then back straight up at Avondale. You're a machine, mate. <laughs> oh, cheers, Dad. It's that time of the year, though, and uh, uh, it's a great time, and especially when we roll into New Zealand Cup Week as well coming up. It's going to be a spectacular day down there with the 2,000 guineas. Uh, but, yeah, big congrats to you, though, with your collector the Melbourne Cup. You must have played some nice easy bets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. Keep the shots up. Uh Mate, uh, maiden of the week. Have you got a maiden of the week for us? So you, you've been very good with these. Have been very successful. Worth following. Uh, yeah, look, I think it was a pretty obvious one from yesterday, uh, which was a, a very much an on-speed bias. But this horse jumped straight to the front, of course, from the James and Wellwood team, and that been one more time. It looked very good mm. through the trials. Look, it's a, it was a race that uh, really did stand up as a good race going into the meeting uh, with a number of horses that looked pretty good through the trials. So. Uh, certainly is going to be one to watch. And look, in terms of maybe not picking another one, I just think maybe looking over those Ellerslie fields from Tuesday, there was a, a couple of $30,000 maiden races there that I think you can maybe not just find one horse, but maybe can pull those fields apart and, and find three or four that have been beaten in behind and use those as, as, as a chance to maybe when they go back to a maiden midweek somewhere or like the edit race, for instance. I think there's just going to be races yeah. from that Tuesday meeting where you can find a number of winners from those maiden races as well. Become a very exactly. strong meeting, hasn't it, BP? That Melbourne Cup day at at Ellerslie. Um, oh, it's a genuinely oh, premier yeah. meeting, and mm. the money's up, and you get a lot of lot of trainers and owners targeting lower grade horses, picking up a bit of money before yeah. they go through the grades. So, no, I agree with BP. It's a meeting that you want to be following to the future. Good time of year for those those strong maiden races, isn't it? But what what was it called? One more time. That one more time. Was it, that's correct. The horse that won at. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. It. If, you're, if you're a Duff Punk fan, you'll be all over it. So, uh, yeah, one more yeah. time. That's why it went straight <laughs> over my head. Uh, so they didn't miss it in the betting, Steve, either. No, there were some time. decent bets Jeepers landed. creepers. Uh, I think we posted 280, 290 mm. from memory, and we had a $15,000 bet at the top flock. Mm. Uh, and then I think it closed almost even money. Okay. Uh, did three dollars? It was threes, I think, wasn't it, hunting? Threes. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good, VP. He's always on the top flock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just get the to... top flock right, Steve. <laughs> I always just turn it one or two in my. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, open exactly. Up yeah. You don't want to miss by too much, do you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Always fiddling yeah. the numbers. And James Wellwood team are. Uh... <laughs> yeah, don't go there. The James Wellwood team um, firing up, Steve, as well. Yeah, it took a while. Um, yeah. Post lockdown, they had two illicit win in the early part of September at Ellerslie when she resumed. But as I mentioned uh, on the show last week, their last 10 horses they presented to the races, there was four winners. And they haven't mm -hmm. gone backwards in the last seven days, obviously with that maidener during the week. So it's a stable that they, they grow with confidence. They bring their top horses and their young horses that they're looking to take through the grades once the tracks hit that dead slash good, uh, good nature. And it's definitely a stable that punters have identified in the last two weeks. Yep. Uh, they're getting well supported. So if, if there is a runner this weekend from that particular stable and you're very keen on it, it's probably better to shop early. Yeah, okay. Uh, because the pros will be with it just purely on numbers and, and the betting profile around their horses. So we'll touch on a couple of their runners uh, throughout the program. 
they've got a couple they've got a couple but okay. uh, that just has to be that betting tree and when a stable is on fire that's where the pros go late mm. in the piece and not often do you see them drift yeah okay it's like you when the europe boston's on fire or something you know the money can yeah absolutely when op is yeah. hovering around 26 percent as a strike rate and yep. and 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 you and you put it in in terms of around the stables which we know to yeah even though they have a large volume of horses their strike rate is is very very tidy uh, and Danielle has has got a phenomenal strike rate in terms. I yep. think uh, last time I checked NZTR website, it was hovering just over three, which is incredible. That won't hold up throughout the season, but right now she's a great betting profile in terms of a jockey. Okay, good stuff. Um, yeah, we're all just getting over Cup Day uh, here in Petoni. Quite a strong day, apparently. Steve, well, by all accounts, good day for the TB. Betting was quite strong by all accounts. Betting was very strong, very yeah, strong okay. up yep. on last year, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's but that's been the pattern since lockdown. The the, the betting COVID. in terms of turno- turnover has been enormous, uh, yeah. not just overseas, but domestically, which is fantastic for the industry. Yeah, okay. okay. So uh, COVID's helping someone, might be helping us. Oh, gee, we there. Well, sorry. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we don't. We, we wish COVID ill will, don't we? <laughs> don't we? Yeah, a farewell. We a farewell. We don't want it. There but, we go. Uh, yeah, hasn't hurt the figures around here uh, yet. And fingers crossed we don't get too much more of it in our fair land. Um, 2000 Guineas Day, guys, start a cup week, fantastic. Uh, we're in for a booming week. Uh, we've obviously got uh, New Zealand Cup on Tuesday at Addington as well, and that market's open. But we start the day with uh, the 2000 Guineas, Steve, and that's Rickard and Race 8 for the Colts and Geldings over a mile. And two re- relatively dominant favourites here. Yeah, the punters are pretty keen at the pointy end of the market in the first 24 hours of trading 30 years. Led by, need I say more, 290, and a couple of turns to 270. Aegon, also a firmer. 340 into 320. Mm. They almost match dollar for dollar and account for 85% of total turnover. Okay, so they've identified two Strong. runners in the Group 1 feature. Uh, Bourbonier, 650 out to 7. Rocket Spay, blinkers on, firm at $8. Marine, 12 out to 13. Unition, got out to 19, just back in a turn to 18. Embers at 21. Lord Ardmore at 26 with Watchmaker. Zoltan at 34 with Mr. Reliable, mm. also at that price. But the best lead I can give is clearly at the top of the book in terms of pricing, and need mm. I say more in Aegon. Yeah, yeah, they've really sing- they've really singled these two out, Pops, need I say more in Aegon. You've got one a pace influence and one that's going to be flying from the back. What do we do? Yeah, I suppose the first thing, let's talk around the pace in the race because he is drawn uh, out in barrier number 10, is need I say more. And Look, the times that he has won, he's been able to find the front very easily. Uh, look, this is going to be a, a different race for him on the weekend because, uh, A, it's 1,600 metres for the very first time, and how much work is he going to have to do? And, and what are the pressures are there going to be in the race for Need I Say More? Because, look, Stephen, I'll come to you because that's that's going to be the question mark for, for just how much he cops uh, in, in the race because you've got a horse like Unition who's drawn uh, inside him, who, as we know, is a leader, You've also got Embers, the filly in the race, who's drawn low. Uh, and, and even, uh, look, Pro- Rocket Spray's drawn Barry number one. They've got blinkers on. You'd imagine they're going to be more forward with him, but I can't see him being a part of a, a speed battle. But it d- just makes the race a little bit more interesting with him being drawn out and maybe a couple of other runners that can go forward in the race, Stephen. Absolutely, BP. Unisha and Embers, mm. they've led in their last two or three starts, even though they've got a light profile to date. And need I say more, who's drawn the outside out of those three prominent runners, I think need I say more leads. I think yeah. Opie will, will, won't have a bar of taking a sit in behind Unition or possibly Embers. I think he'll continue to cross, find that rail. As BP mentioned, all his wins has been when he's been leading. Uh, the one loss he had when he was caught three wide without cover at Hastings in the Guineas. So yeah. I think he'll eventually get across Opie on need I say more, take that rail position and just see how the race eventuates in terms of tempo mid-race. Uh, but I've got it leading in front of Unition and Embers who will take a spot uh, just in behind, need I say, more. But I think with that that pressure underneath for the first mm-hmm. at least furlong or two, there will be pace generated. Uh, so I think horses like Aegon, even Rocket Spade, they'll know that will be set up early tempo. It's just whether they back off around that, uh, maybe mm-hmm. that 1,000 to 400 metre yeah. mark. Um, but overall, the first two two furlongs, uh, there will be a bit of pressure up front naturally because of that speed from Unition, Embers, and need I say more. Which way's that sway you, VP? We're hearing that maybe that little bit of pressure under the favourite. Yeah, look, I, I'm going towards Aegon because of that, and I really believe he's a horse that uh, further the better for him as well, Aegon, the way that he's really 
uh, attack the line in, in both of his victories uh, and a big roomy track like Rickerton as well. So he's going to need that to be able to uh, produce his best figures. But um, uh, I like him. I do like Aegon. And I think if if there's just that touch of pressure on Nido say more, he could become vulnerable and it could open it up for Aegon. It's not to say that Nido say more can't win the race because if, if he gets it his own way in a certain time of the race, that might be enough to hold out a challenge from Aegon as well. So hence why I've gone the two over the one uh, in this year's 2000 guineas, Aegon over Need I Say More. Uh, after that, I, I think there's a lot of horses here that you can actually mention in this in this next bracket. Uh, you can, you've got Bourbonier, first of all, who's run second in the Hawks Bay Guineas, second in the Sarton, and, and sort of has just got there under the radar, uh, his yeah. uh, Bourbonier. Uh, then you've got a horse like Marine from the, the Pitmans, uh, who had that battle with Unition down the straight in the Water Creek Stakes. The one that's really up in the air is Rocket Spade. Look, I know he's worked really well this week. Uh, the team are absolutely pleased with his progress since the start, and he, he is going to have to improve. He's got beaten six lengths in the start. He did a couple of things wrong, so they've applied blinkers and put a tongue tie on. Uh, they believe that 1,600 metres is going to be bang on for him, and, and he's in a really good spot. This has been his week leading into the 2,000 guineas. Expect a run from him, Rocket Spade, uh, on the weekend, and with him being drawing barrier one, Maybe they just want to make sure they get him a little a, a bit closer uh, to them and, and try and use that barrier draw that they've been presented with. Uh, my ultimate roughies in the race is Mr. Reliable. I'm uh, not sure if he can win the race. I think he's a really nice horse, though. I, I think he's a horse that maybe you look back in the 2000 guineas and see this horse flashing home and he goes on to do some good things this summer. Um, I, I like what I saw at Ashburton. He's an up-and-comer. This might be beyond him on the weekend, but he can run a race. What do you say, man, barely standing about this race? Can you see anything outside the top two here? I mean, um, Rocket Spade got the blinkers on, Bourbon the forgotten runner, or is it hard to get away off the top there? I just really like the look of that Son of Sacred Falls. I just think he is an absolute superstar. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if Need I Say More doesn't get it all his own way, yeah. um, then Aegon, he'll be coming flying down the outside, yeah. ready to pounce, so... I actually, I thought with the draw yep. that they may have been priced slightly closer together, the top oh, two. You're saying Stephen's offering his touch of value here I'm, at 320. If, if I'm getting on, I'm <laughs> getting on the, on the 320 now on Aegon. <laughs> um, and I do agree with uh, BP. I think Mr. Reliable at $34 um, really, really finished off that 1,400-metre race down in Ashburton very, very nicely. Okay. I know it was in a lot easier company than he meets here, but I, yeah. Looks like a progressive type. Yeah, okay, you boys are lining up. Sacred Falls, Steve. We're having a chat about this during the week. Um, the what sire of Aegon. And now he's being. They're flying, aren't they? Oh, they are. You just mentioned uh, All Saints Eve, All Saints Eve, and Ice Bath, who just about took a took the $7.5 yeah, million yeah, yeah. race in Sydney last yep. weekend. And back home here locally, Aromatic's going through the grades. You've got mm. Aegon, who could yeah. potentially do what his father did and win the 2000 Guineas. So, like, he's a big loss to the industry in terms of breeding. Yeah. Uh, sacred Falls. So hopefully in his little uh, group of progeny, uh, he's got a stallion that might come through the grades and replace him. But yeah, mm. big loss. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so Aegon for you, BP, and just summing it up in the top four, mate, 2-1. Um, yeah, 2-1. Yeah, Rocket Spade for, for third. Um, yep. As I said, I think I think he's a horse that can be an improver and, and needs to be off his start and run. Uh, and and Bourbonier, I think, um, drawn awkwardly for him on the weekend, Bourbonier. Uh, but you just have to respect what he's done. He's bumped into Aegon, Nido, Sam Ward is at his last two starts. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I'll, in my four numbers, two, one, seven, and three. Okay, boys lining up with Aegon here. That's uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, Rocket Spade, $8, Bourbon is seven. Yeah, and the roughy there, Mr. Reliable, out at 34, Steve. Yeah, the Galileo Mia, I think she won four races. Galsia, and, I remember her. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think. Um, she raced in Hickman's Colours? Or, yeah, I think she did. Yeah. I think she did. And, yep. She went through the grades. I don't think she hit the elite level, but she was a progressive mare when racing. So the 1600 shouldn't be a drama. Bourbon mm. the mile shouldn't be a drama. Just as BP mentioned, Sticky Gate and the way he maps, yep. he hit the line quite strongly in the start. And the last 200 was the second fastest in the race. So Bourbon Air shouldn't, shouldn't be any dramas over the mile. And need I say more? Look, Opie Bosson, how many 2,000 guineas has he won, BP? Do you know off the head, off top of your head, is it six or seven, or is he chasing his eight? Oh, I haven't got that number in front of me, well, Stephen. Um, you can follow that follow that up for us by the weekend. He'll work that out. Yeah, I know yeah. It's his very first one, so it's over two decades that he's mm. been winning these 2,000 guineas. From from memory, it's about seven, but I could be wrong. Okay. 
Yeah, well, I think you're, you're somewhere close to the mark, mate. But yeah, we'll need yeah. to we'll need to hustle that one up. But. Regardless, okay. it's, it's a phenomenal record he has in the two thousand guineas. Okay, BP will tidy that up for us. He loves a bit of homework, pops, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just keep, just keep bringing it there. Yeah, yeah, bring it yeah, yeah. all these questions. Everyone, yeah, everyone goes to you, pops. You know that that's part of the part of your job, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> bring it or no, bring it or no. Uh, right, um, let's go back to Ray. <laughs> let's go back to race six, guys. Uh, and that is a Pegasus Sprint over a thousand meters. We've got a real little speed demon. I say little. She's a very talented mare that loves a thousand meters at the top of the book here, Steve. A little bit of an arm wrestle at the top of the book here in terms of trading. Wicker Force, a well back commodity at 320, hits the market in front of Sensei at 390. Uh, those are the two punters I've identified early doors. Uh, Kiwi Ida, a little bit soft at 550. Uh, Pasega at seven dollars, more wicker nine dollars. In double figure line, Don Carlo at fourteen with Nelly Bly, uh, Fibonacci at nineteen. Walk this way, the three year old at forty one dollars. But Punt is pretty keen to back wicker force and sensei early proceedings. Okay, interesting race pops. Kiwi Ida sort of throws a little bit of a curve ball in there as well. Whether she's a sort of a second day proposition, um, I'm not too sure. But um, which way can you are you dicing the Pegasus for us? I find it hard to go past the horse who won it last year in Sensei. I, I think the race sets up well for him. He just, he's going to have to, uh, he's drawn barrier number one. Last year, uh, it was a hot race up front. There was about four or five that were all pressing forward. He camped in behind, got across heels, got to the centre part of the track and and just boomed over the top. So he will get that pressure because there's a, there is a number of speed demons in the race and it's just a matter of him being presented at the right time and getting that lucky needs because he, uh, does race very well fresh, uh, and he is a good galloper. He, he is. I mean, of course, he won that race so impressively and then went to the stewards and, and didn't quite have that same sharpness And on a track condition that had a little bit more juice out of the track compared to day number one uh, 12 months ago. So uh, if the track stays on that firm side, which he really does love, he loves just bouncing off a firm track and letting rip. So uh, I, I think he's a I think he's a good bet uh, in the race in the Pegasus mm-hmm. this year. Since had to go back-to-back, he has... Uh, yeah, 58 last year, that's 59 this year. I, I do like Kiwi Ida because it's going to be so hot. It's going to be a, a race where she'll be flashing home. It's a matter of where she flashes into. Does she flash home into second spot? Can she keep rolling over the top of them? Or is she a horse that's going to be the eye catcher finishing into third or fourth position? Either way, I think she'll run a big race uh, because yeah. she's a class mare and she was beaten in the Taranaki Breeders last time out. She's raced in the Group 1 uh, at Hawks Bay, of course, behind call sign Mav. Uh, in the Tarzino, and we know what she did last season as well. She's um, a multiple black type performer. Uh, after that, then you start looking towards these speed runners that can they keep running? Uh, horses like Wicker Force, uh, More Wicker, and even Fibonacci is an interesting horse because we know Fibonacci goes so good down the trip them uh, straight as well. Uh, Poisegur comes in with winning form from the Pike Barn, goes from 65 to 74 now to an open handicap, uh, Pegasus Stakes. But every time I look back at the race, all that speed should help Sensei in the race with the right breaks once turning for home. Encouraging that money for Sensei, man barely standing, I'd suggest that well, that would get me a little bit excited. Good early support, isn't there? Uh, there certainly is. Uh, I still like the look of the fave, though. Wicker Force at 320. Yeah. All but beat Enzo's lad and the listed lightning handicap at Trentham. Mm. Uh, was impressive winning over 1,000 metres at Rickerton back in Feb. I just was six in this race last year and really didn't get um, every every chance. Going she missed the way. start last yeah, year. She went out hot favourite and she missed the start. Right again, a bit like uh, need I say more? All her wins. She well, she's to, had yeah, six yeah. wins. Five exactly. of those wins is when she's been leading. Yeah. The other win she sat second out of. So and she missed the start like you mentioned that race last year. So uh, she did her bickies in the first furlong. So mm. it, it, crucial that first. What, 100 metres of the race that she can get a spot and, and be the leader. Yeah, okay. So you're with Wicker Force, man, barely standing. Anything down the page that tickles your taste buds? Uh, Poise Sagu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pikey. You would have backed this last time. You would have been all over this last time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and the rest <laughs> of the <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, big big, big step up in grade, yeah. but yeah. still. Big yeah. Charla and Miss Federer as a two year old. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. they might have found the key with us all, Steve. I mean, yeah. Well, Brad, look, wins. mathematics are against her with the weights and measures, but yep. look, she has that bit strong betting profile with this trainer and uh, Cozzy, uh, one of the leading jockeys down in the south. And so she has to beat the handicapper, um, but this is the right race to do it, and, uh, the way the race is set up. And 
Uh, Kiwi Ida, intriguing. Yeah, right? I, I found I, it very I, hard to place her in the market. Makes me All nervous. All her PBs are at 1,400. I'm just not... I think she might race on the second day because you look at this mm. horse, what is the best race for her over the three days? Yep. It's not this race over a 1,000 metres. I'm not saying she can't win it. No. But surely the breeders on the middle day, set weights and penalties, uh, obviously for the fillies and mares, uh, she'll be thrown in there in the weights and she gets to a trip which she, she holds her PB in. So maybe they might back her up. Maybe they might yeah. just ride a, ride a cold here. If she gets over the top of them, bonus, but the middle day might be her way. Yeah, okay. the noms haven't come out yet, so I, I, I no, don't. I know. feel like she's a but. second day. Also said that. Well, I, I think they've got some, they're cooking something up the passes here. Mm. Mm. No money for her as yet, yeah. so uh, be interesting to see where she finishes up up in terms of uh, the betting ladder. But uh, currently third favorite. Can at swap them in that thousand meters down the shoot though? Can't they? Man, barely standing if they get the right run. They certainly they, can. They can finish over the top. As you say, oh, just if she's at her best and, and, and primed mm. to go, yep. she wins us. Well, yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, you can see her winning it, Best coming source, right over the top. Say. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm thinking cooking something as you say. Yeah, second Look, day. The Parsons are are not a betting stable. We know that through the years of working here, Thaddeus, and mm -hmm. she's surrounded by Wicker Force, who's always a losing liability. Yes, Sensei. That, when pretty labels them, they go off. They and there's early money well. here. Yep. And Pasoga has been well supported mm -hmm. right throughout its short campaign with Tony Pike and, and they've got the Bickies, the Pundas, so they're reinvesting. So yep. she sits third line and the horses around her in the market are betting profiles. So okay. no surprise that she's a little bit soft in the market purely on that. Okay, give it to us in four BP, uh, the Pegasus. You're, uh, you had Wicker Force, didn't you, on top, number four? Uh, I went to Sensei. Sensei on top. Oh, sorry, Sensei, um, my yeah. yeah, yeah, went the two on top. I'll throw one Kiwi Ida in there, pretty much like what we, yep. we've all been discussing. We, we, she can fly home. She, uh, I can see her rocketing home uh, in the race. It's a matter of where she lands. Because she's going to be second, third, or fourth, or out of the money and still running uh, a huge race. So I'll, I'll put her in for second, just on her class. So I went two, one, four. Um, away from that, you could go anything else. But, yeah, they're the three that I'm really liking, two, one, and four in that order. Yeah, okay. The money's there to support Pops's top selection and Sensei too. So... You can bet with a touch of confidence uh, off that early money around Sensei in the Pegasus over a thousand metres. Race number six on the card. Race number ten on the card, gentlemen, is a key race with an eye to the New Zealand Cup, obviously on the last day, and that's uh, race number ten, the uh, Metropolitan. Strong betting race that is, yeah. so led by the Good Fight at five dollars, and that is your best lead in early trading in front of Lincoln King at five fifty. Uh, William Wallace, who was an impressive winner at Rickard in two weeks ago at eight dollars, shares that price. With Robusto and Beauty Star, Hurry Kane, interesting runner at nine dollars. Uh, Vainglory nine fifty. Double figures, a uh, double figures around. Uh, Asa Thought at fifteen dollars. Uh, Planchenko's uh, had a little bit of money at seventeens, and Five Princes the local at nineteen dollars. So quite a deep race. There's four or five they played early, but the best lead is the good fight. Okay, the good money for the good fight this time, pops. It was a little bit friendless at Mudder Mudder last time, but. Yeah, as you'd imagine, in an open uh, open handicap over the 2,500 metres, uh, she's a wide open. Oh, yeah, this is a hard race. It really is. Um, look, she's got the right credentials to win the race with what we've seen from her from last season. Uh, City of Auckland Cup place, get in, uh, Auckland Cup as well. Look, um, we, we all know her credentials as a stayer, uh, his credentials as a stayer. So it's a matter of him putting it all together in this race, I thought. But it, he's not the only chance uh, is the good fight because... I've actually liked what I've seen from uh, Lincoln King uh, as well. Uh, yep. Daryl Bradley, who of course, uh, uh, picked up the Fielding Cup on the weekend just gone with Mo Harker as well, and he takes the ride for Stephen Marshall. I really like how he's been tracking, and further the better for him is going to be the key. A beauty star from the Pike Barn's been sent down south. They couldn't get a run the, the, the Saturday before. They raced on the Thursday. They got the job done with a with a, a fairly easy victory. And then you've got horses like Baby Manaka and As a Thought, who's, who's bred to be able to run the distance out. I really did find this a, a very hard race. Hurricane, um, the, the Raymond Connors tra trained runner. I'll come to you guys. What sort of money have you seen, not for this race, but maybe more so for the New Zealand Cup around this runner? Hurricane, Steve. Is it, is He's been well-backed. Uh, yeah. I think I won a jump out a couple of weeks ago on the CD, and since then we've seen a bit of money, and you'd, you'd say it's, it's around the stable. Mm. To indicate that the horse was travelling down to Christchurch, uh, it's always been well on the market. It's probably the probably the one one of the more progressive stayers in the yeah. central districts. Oof, flying. Uh, the big question mark is is the firm track conditions. It's likely to get over the carnival and the quick backup around Hurricane. But 
on pedigree, it's going to get the two miles, and you just got to respect the stable. They've been there, done that yeah. with horses, and travelling them uh, down to Christchurch for the cup. And obviously, they've got a, a decent opinion that this horse can handle a better footing. So mm. um, there's no money to indicate that it's it's right on the job for this Saturday. Mm. Uh, but we'll try and keep customers you posted can. in the last like. It's going to be a crucial race yeah, to sort it, of it keep is. an eye it on is. money. There's, money there's two intriguing it. runners here in terms yeah. that they're not nominated for the New Zealand Cup, so this could potentially be the grand final unless unless they're late nommed uh next week sure uh, which there is clarification or classifications around doing that but mm. one of them uh, is beauty star who who uh, was just comes off a beating plunge last start mm. uh, we're making a southern debut at ash burden uh, yet to be nominated for the cup so you'd think that's uh well on the mark in terms of uh going out to win on saturday yeah and also william wallace he was good last time. He was good, and yeah. uh, his peak distance is probably around 2,200 metres, so yeah. he's going to his extreme distance in terms of uh, uh, figures at 2,500. Yep. Um, and obviously Sarah McNabb's jumped off and aboard Hurry Kane. So they're the two horses that are not nominated for the New Zealand Cup, so you know that they'll be desperately yeah. trying to win the, this race over the okay. carnival, but um, yeah, yeah. tricky race. Yeah, your sort of race, though, man, barely standing, to be fair. Uh, $5 favourites, handicap uh, conditions. Can really sort of jag something at double figures in these sort of races. You're oh, probably going for the favourite after I've said that. Oh, I do like the look of Lincoln King at five dollars. <laughs> um, won well at Matter Matter, and then yeah, uh, progressive. I think it was a wee bit unlucky at Tarapa when second in behind Robusto. Yeah. Um, in a race where they yeah Robusto led all the way that day. Didn't yeah, it? they basically yeah. walked. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, further down the page, I had a look at who dares wins at twenty three dollars. <laughs> He's a good old performer, isn't he? Wasn't probably that, not that old. Wasn't that far off William Wallace in the Spring Classic? Um, and meets him like two and a half kilos off better here. Hmm. That the the twenty five hundred is probably right at her. Yeah, yeah. That that's the the final furlong. And to he'll carry be, that weight over the two thousand five hundred is a big journey. It, it'll be the, the the deep breaths will be. <laughs> In and out, <laughs> but yeah, Lincoln yeah. King. I thought he's progressive, and he looks he looks progressive. I'd have to say that when it met him, uh, Mutter Mutter was impressive. Um, there's a stack of chances here, pops, aren't there? Really, I mean, you could make a case for a dozen in this one. Yeah, there is. Look, I, I, I like one at a bit of odds in the race. Um, oh, in Namoa Tharge, number fourteen. Now, now she is breed to be able to um, go a lot further than. Uh, the 2,500 metres. So I think she's a horse that could be the sneaky. Uh, I, I really like how she won last time out. It was She couldn't get into the, the, the feature race and she had to come back to the 74 grade because she got the job done there. Um, I, I thought she was the one at the longer priced odds I, I was happy to to spec at. Um, not sure what her mm. price is in the New Zealand. Yeah, 17 currently. step. Oh, yeah, well, we, we should talk about that. Because this will have a real, this will could really shake it up. As, as a thought, nominated for New Zealand Cup, is Namoa Thaj. Uh, what is that? Jonathan backwards? No, no, it's nothing to do, nothing even close. <laughs> um, yeah, this could really shake things up because we've lost yeah, communique, obviously. So I think most of them uh, will will get a start in his own cup. Yep. Uh, a couple of horses that Vainglory sits 20th order of entry and Baby Monarca sits 22nd order of entry. 18 start in his own cup. So I think most of these horses will gain a start yep. regardless of where they finish on the weekend. Mm. Uh, we know there might be a couple that come out between now and when the final field comes out on Wednesday. So um, I'm not sure the clarification or uh, is it top? It used to be top three automatic entry into New Zealand Cup. It, yeah. it could still hold that in terms of uh, exempt from the yeah. ballot. But um, I, think I think most of them are going to start. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Stephen. I think I think you are right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, look, I think the good fight and the and Lincoln King are the two that – um, yep. I do like, but I'm in terms of having a bet on, on something at a bit of value in the race, I'll be looking towards the 14 and uh, Namoa Tharge. And just um, to seem to give you some homework, uh, I've got the answer for you. And yes, Open Boston is on seven 2,000 guineas winners. Uh, is, uh, so there you go. Looking for eight, Stephen. Well, we're back one away. every three years, isn't it? it from it, his very yeah. first one. So He doesn't mind winning the back to back either. <laughs> well, who won it last year? That's not that's not Opie. No, no, well <laughs> when did he win it to 2014, 2013. Okay. okay, okay. Okay. Horses' names, please. Turn me loose. Yep. Okay. Atlante. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. And he did it again. Murray Baker, Andrew Forsman, both times. Ninety nine and ninety eight. <laughs> okay, gone too far. We've gone too far. Ninety nine was Buzz Light. Buzz Light. Yeah. Buzz Light, yeah. Buzz Light, yeah. yeah thank you. What was yes. his first dance? Was dance. It? Okay. Oh, okay, Buzz Lightyear. Nice. That's not bad. Was that 99? It was indeed. Yeah. 
I was at varsity in my prime. Anyway, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> quite a, quite oh, a, quantified prime. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was, it was never a high. It was never high. A high bar. Oh, I want to hear more about it. Let's, no, let's yeah, no, 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 Lucky no. if it was a rating sixty-five. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Didn't climb to the heights I perhaps should have. A lot of potential, they said. <laughs> uh, anyway, top four pops. You've got good fight in Lincoln King. Uh, one and two. Namoa Tharge in for third. And what? What else are we going to chuck in for fourth, mate? Uh, what else can we put in there? Um, pr- probably something like Robusto. Uh, again, yeah. I, I think by Z, Baker Forsman. Um, yeah, so, so I'd be looking towards Robusto, okay. but each way all day on Namoa Tharge is how I'm going to play it. Yeah, okay, $17 for Namoa Tharge. It's not bad. And you, you're yeah. Lincoln King. Lincoln King. Yeah, okay. In terms yeah. of the futures around New Zealand Cup, there, there is a, a an opportunity for a customer to back a horse here because the prices you're seeing for the Metropolitan almost mirror the New Zealand Cup. Now, right. if there's a horse here that comes out and demolishes this field or puts a margin on them, there's going to be a, a, a decent shuffle in the market. Yeah, I can see We're not confident change. around the New Zealand market at this stage. No. Uh, we know there's a lot to play out, uh, obviously, around the Metropolitan. So, so uh, if something if, overperforms in this race, the Metropolitan. It yeah, really... there's an opportunity for a horse to, yeah. to be a standout and say, I'm the horse to beat in seven and days' time. That happens yep. as well, doesn't it? Look, let, let's go back to Nymph Monte from, for, for, from memory a couple of years ago. That, that horse absolutely obliterated the Metropolitan field. Mm. Uh, and God. I think well, it certainly wasn't a favoured runner uh, in New Zealand Cup. There was support. But, of course, it started it was a $2 favourite, I think, for, in the mm. New Zealand Cup. Uh, yeah. And then I think from memory it might have rained and it did, that certainly didn't help it anyway uh, going into the into that year, but yeah, you're right. If you can find something you like, um, and if it can do a Nymph Monde, you might find yourself yeah. you're on something that's at the top of the market and you've backed it All at right. 17s. Yeah, exactly. Namoathage, there's the one we're going to have a little crack on Brennan's each way uh, in the Metropolitan, in the New Zealand Cup before the Metropolitan runs uh, on Saturday afternoon, race number 10 uh, on the 11 race card down there. Um, we want to have a look at one race at Tarapa, boys, or I'm interested in your thoughts on this race, and it's Race number six on the card, the uh, open sprint, uh, 1,200 metres deep, 14, 1,400 metres, uh, and headed up by a pretty talented uh, horse of Robert Patterson's. Yeah, before I read out the prices, Thaddeus. Um, it is 1,200, of course. Right. 1,200, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get BP's thoughts around the possible track conditions for Saturday after I've read out the markets and when we come to them because there is showers forecasted. Uh, mm. A bit happening today, Friday, and also the late stage of Saturday. So we're just not sure where this track's, track's going to come up at Tadapa on Saturday, which is stifled but betting a touch. But as it stands, Coventina Bay is a favourite at two dollars ninety. Open three ten, but we've accepted a ten thousand dollar bet at the three ten price to get your price to two ninety. Do no, they don't. They don't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Endless drama. Very hard horse uh, to price up, frame up during the week. Now sits in that second line at three ten. Burgundy Bell seven dollars. Uh, Mascarpone seven fifty. Double figures around spring heat resumes twelve. With also short views, similar profile resumes. Ehu at eighteen. Mister Universe twenty one. New York Jazz Campari twenty six each of two. Ricky Tiki Tabby thirty four. But with that ten thousand dollar bet, mm. the obvious leaders Coventina Bay at a two ninety quote. It's quite. It's a nice field, pops, isn't it? Pretty intriguing. And uh, look, Coventina Bay wouldn't mind the sting out of the ground. You'd imagine. That's right, and look, the horse is going to get it. It's rained basically from about 12 o'clock Thursday, uh, as we record this Thursday afternoon, mm-hmm. and, and it's still raining now. Um, look, we do know that the Tarapa track is a, is a track that can dry very quickly, but there's going to be a lot of water hitting this track Thursday, Thursday night, it's supposed to rain Friday, and then some of Saturday as well. So it's going to have... It's going to have the effect, but as I said, it can come back quickly, but uh, there is going to be the juice in the track that some horses won't be looking for. Uh, I mean, endless drama. Let's go straight to him. I mean, I I don't think I've seen a horse win a trial like that. I mean, it doesn't matter what sort of horse it is. I mean, if it's a horse that's having, you know, it's been here, there and everywhere, or if it's a horse that's, you know, looking to go to the races for the first time. I mean, uh, Billy Pinn. Just had to let it slide and, and, and won by 20 lengths. Um, and this is a horse who was going to be possibly retired. Um, he goes well fresh. He won't mind the, the dig in the track that will help his old legs. And, and look, you look at his Foxbridge plate win. He won fresh up, beating home Tiakia Shark and Melody Bell back in 2019, and he's drawn barrier one. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple of good reasons why. I mean, it, sh- it clearly shows he's well with how he won that trial uh, on the 15th of October. But you, Stephen's right, he is a hard horse still to place because it is still endless drama at the same time. So mm. 
I mean, Coventina Bay, we all saw it. Um, I think Blind Freddy even saw it as well uh, with Coventina's Bay's <laughs> run <laughs> last time to the races. Um, yeah. Produced fast sectionals. Yes, it did. Um, and it was um, a, a horse that everyone put into the black book. Isn't it a horse you always get money for as well, though? Uh, I mean, I know yeah, ten thousand dollars is a large investment, but it's a horse you always get money for, though, isn't it? It is BP. Um, we have one loyal customer that likes to invest on Coventina Bay and go quite large. So we always anticipate that bet coming through and we don't overreact, but we at $2.90 off a peak of three ten. My question back to you, BP, are you slightly concerned about the drop back and trip the 1200? Cause she was heading towards, mm. if not staying and remaining at seven furlongs or possibly hitting a mile. I know she's um, the connections are thought she's, she's going to get to 1600 meters in time this campaign and it might be, at a higher level, but surely it's a slight concern for customers diving in at the 290. Just got lost in that race, didn't she? Uh, didn't she over 1400 meters? Just and just seemed to get further and further away from the rest of them. Uh, look, I know it's a horse that is a back marker uh, and does rattle home, but you still would have liked to see the horse being uh, placed a pair or two closer, uh, so then she can reel off those fast sectionals and is close enough to those ones in front of her, so she can do exactly that. So. Oh, I think it's a massive concern, to be honest with you, Stephen, with the, with the way she's run over 1,400 metres coming back to 12. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, of course, they can run quicker over 1,200 metres, but she's going to have to make sure she can be in that posse uh, to be able to capitalise on that speed up front with her good turn of foot at the end of the race. So um, they're all question marks. I think Burgundy Bell will like the rain. That's a horse that will appreciate what's happening at the moment. Um, she'll really love uh, the conditions if they they start pushing into that slow bracket because we know heavy track records there with Burgundy Bell. Mascarpone, what do we do with him? Um, he drops four kilos in weight on his last run. Uh, we beat behind Deerfield, who's just a beast with uh, a, a horse who goes to the front and carries no matter what, can carry the grandstand and still win. And then Spring Heat, who races well fresh um, and has two very quiet trials. Ta Taiki Yanagida has really got the whole quiet trial thing going down at the moment uh, with the Sullivan <laughs> runners. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's really got, got it down pat now. Um, so, uh, it's a quiet trial, but, isn't that? It is yeah, it is, it is. But we know how good she is because she's group one place, Telegraph. Um, but again, she won't mind the insistence in the track of getting to dead, but she's doesn't gonna, not going to want it any further to, the, to that mm -hmm. slow bracket that'll uh, blunt her turn of foot. So a really good race, but also a hard race to assess mm -hmm. with the conditions so I'm sticking with the old boy, Endless Drama. Going Endless Drama, man, barely standing. Uh, thoughts on this one? Because you'd say there's a few chances outside the two faves. It's hard to go past Brendan's logic, though. I, mm. I really like um If there's one thing that Tony Pike, he always has them ready to go fresh up. Yep. We know Endless, the class, um, Ben Tiakau Shark and the Fox, uh, Foxbridge. Yeah, correct. Yep. Won an Easter Cup, placed mm. him as Dreddy. Um, yeah, yeah. I like those sorts of uh, statistics uh, yeah. on, on a horse. And when they come come around and there's some up-and-comers ready to knock knock them off their perch. Yeah, there's not no money for it either, is there? Just no. that they, You'd be watching that price like a hawk. I would be 310 at the moment. Chance to start favourite man barely standing, you're saying. Well... Well, no, no, because I'm expecting quite a quite a few dollars on Coventina yeah, Bay as well. Right. So yeah. I, th I think that might just. She's got such a short SP throughout her, not mm. just this campaign, but also right throughout her career, Coventina Bay. So that will naturally drag the price down or hold that price. So, look, I think the safe bet to say is that she will start fade, but there might not be too much in it. No, just a slight. There's there's probably more question marks around endless drama, even though Coventina Bay back to twelve hundred and where she maps. Yeah, but just in terms of where endless drama is. Uh, preparation wise but um do you won that trial by 20 lengths and you break down the numbers i know it's only trials i think there was 14 heats over a thousand meters mm. the next best in terms of lengths was 12 lengths inferior to uh to endless drama yeah, okay. so he did run time uh even though it was just the trials endless drama will he be right on slow track steve Not yeah no dramas no as drama, bp yeah. mentioned it was yeah. a slow nine in the fox bridge that's right uh, when he bet to yakao shark and melody bell and i uh, over shorter distances, I've mentioned it before to you, Thaddeus. So mm. Top weights don't don't concern me. No. Uh, the class galloper, and you've got that weight for a reason. He's a big boy, and mm. if he gets beat, it won't be the weight. Okay, that's going to be interesting. You know, we'll be watching that endless drama very, very closely uh, in the open sprint there, race number six, Tirapa. Righto, boys, we'll 
probably pretty close to winding it up. Spring Sling this weekend, uh, man, barely standing. Are we, do we get another crack at that? Oh, crikey. With Brendan looking at me yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah, I can uh, see him staring in the barrel with we'll, anticipation. We'll have to throw something. At, well, yeah. we've got one tonight anyway. Uh, spring Sling on the Kennedy Oaks over at Flemington. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so you can still get on right up. I think it starts around 10 past 7 tonight. So mm. plenty of time to get on. Place a $30 plus fixed odds win bet and get a $5 bonus bet for every horse you beat home. And uh, we'll also be having a Spring Sling, I don't know, can I say, on the 2,000 guineas yeah, on Saturday. So one. Spring Sling on the else. 2,000 guineas as well. Okay. So we're okay. So we all be okay. You go so on they're on. looking to transfer the Spring Sling into domestic racing now that the Aussie carnivals are ending? Is that the... I think you might potentially, potentially? but without giving too much away, okay. they might see okay. a few during Cup Week. Just keep your eyes peeled okay. would be my advice. Nice. Um, uh, yeah. Whitey, well, while we're on the promos, uh, what else we got there? Try time. Uh, we've got touchdowns as well. Yeah, we, we'll have try time on the uh, All Blacks Wallabies test on Saturday night as well. Oh, so yes, uh, yes. you can get stuck into that. On, <laughs> I know you've been feasting on that. Um, of course, we had it on last night, State of Origin, um, and oh. all, all going well. We'll throw it up again for next week's State of Origin, So, which I think is on a Tuesday, not a Wednesday. Mm. Really? Uh, I don't know. That's what I was told. Okay. Okay. We'll believe you. Uh, Queensland, how did they win? Wayne Bennett. Cool. Oh. Daily Cherry Evans. Anyway, another podcast. That's the, what do they call your, what do they call your league one? Apparently you go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the director's cut. All oh, right. Yeah. Let's the short chart here. Short chart here. Yeah, the league advantage up. line. Rightio. Yeah. Uh, bit of the daytime. Let's start with you, Pops. Um, what have you got for us? Of course, if you do have a bit of the day that wins, please feel free to give yourself a wrap as I haven't got a list of bits of the days and if you've had a win and if you haven't just say nothing and move on uh, now we'll be able to tell bit of the day for this weekend keeps running second actually at the moment so um that's all i'll say the best bits okay. um will jordan to score a try in the all black test for tab try time promoters uh, out there <laughs> itching to get out there and score a try so that's one thing I will say. Starting, he, BP? doesn't matter he's in the squad <laughs> 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 get a bit of price. the bloke's a freak um right um <laughs> Is he from the Bay? Yes, or? What's that? Is he from Hawke's Bay or? No, no, no. no. He's, he's a he's a Marco. He's a fins up man. But um, yeah. what am I going for? Best bet, Sensei. Uh, I'll make my best bet yep. in the in the yep. Pegasus and, and race number six. Uh, we'll go for him to back up his his real stylish victory from from twelve months ago. Okay, beautiful Sensei. Money for three ninety Pegasus stakes. Exactly, going for the defending champ. So uh, that looks a decent uh, decent way to spend your money on Saturday. Uh, man barely standing. Can you give us a decent way to spend our money? Odds against? 2,000 guineas. Uh, I'm, I'm banking on need I say more, getting in a speed battle up front, having to spend oh, a bit of petrol, okay. and Aegon Just, coming right mm, over the top. Yeah, okay. Drop on them, descend and go bang, Aegon. Uh, I think $3.20, Steve, currently Aegon is price. So that's, again, we've got a nice little multi-shaping. Can you finish, finish it off for us, Stephen? Yeah, I'll stick with the same stable, uh, the Baker Forsman stable, on a row in race five at uh, Tadarpa and the rating 65 sprint. Uh, one maiden class last start, did in pretty good fashion, didn't run time, was uh, was unable to do uh, that on a heavy 10, but mm. uh, fully taking on older horses, I think she's going to go through the grades. Gets a crucial 3kg claim to 52 and a half, oh. and she has got form on wet tracks. So it's one horse you can probably dive into prior to race day. I think she can operate if the track holds up to a dead, maybe in the early stages of slow. But if the rain really does eventuate in the middle part of the day, the back end of the afternoon, that won't be any uh, drama around Oni I think she can beat the older horses. And from memory, she was a tick under $4 last time I checked. Very good. 370. I've got yeah, it here. I've got your back. Uh, so all in the $3 range, we're pretty close to it. And uh, nice little multi, $27 plus if we take all those three. Um, Okay, boys, better wind it up. Thank you, BP, as always, um, for your efforts, mate. I know it's a busy week, so I appreciate your time on the leg up. Uh, Melody Bell, yes or no on the McKinnon? Yes, John McNeil aboard. So you've got the, the Melbourne Cup hot hand uh, aboard, so let's hope she can make it win 13 at the elite level. Yeah, 100%. Let's hope she can do it. Uh, man, barely standing. Where will you be Saturday, mate? Uh, Don't I'll tell be, me in the office. I'll be here I'm working. A, oh, yeah, Again. Yeah, yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't have to tell us that. You tell your boss there. We don't, you know. Yeah. Um, and the boss doesn't listen to the show. So <laughs> <he's safe. laughs> um, you'll be looking forward to Saturday, though. 
big day. Oh, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Spring sling, all that. So we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. Stephen, thanks for your time as always, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. And um, I guess we'll be back again. We're being taped today, I think, as well. Is that, is that correct? I think we're being taped. Yeah, well, the track I think side. there's a chance we might be on track side. So. Oh, dear. Not sure yeah. the time, we've time gone, slot, but we've gone commercial. Might might be four thirty in the morning, somewhere around somewhere around then. But we'll get, a, <laughs> get a slice of the advertising revenue Jeez. or any of the sort of thing like that. Oh, Don't yeah. like this corporate swing. <laughs> the corp, we've gone corporate oh, here on the leg up. Stick with us. We'll see you in seven days' time. I look forward to your company then on the leg up. But thanks for joining us.